Thank you. Okay. Now, any questions about my introduction? So now, if there is no questions, I have to uh, move to my other station to the blackboard. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is why I should I sh give me a couple of minutes to uh, uh, put the computer to the other station. Thank you. Did you see the whiteboard? Yes, Professor. Okay. Did you see writing on the whiteboard? Is it clear for you? Is this writing clear for you? Yes. Well, maybe I will turn some light off. Give me a second, please. Just tell me what is better. Is it better like that or better like that? This is good. This right here is good. Okay, okay. This means I will stay with this one. Okay. So if this is understandable, let me know. Go ahead and give you objective of today's lab and what you have to do. So if the color which I'm using is not visible for you, you have to tell me I will change the color, okay? Cause of friction. You know, if you have any object which is on the surface, between this object and surface exists the force of friction if you it's object moving in this direction, moving in this direction, you know, V in this direction, friction X producing the frictional force, which is a friction, which is uh, always directed against the motion, always directed against the motion. So this object has mass M. And this means this object act on this surface with the force which is mg, right? From the other side, this surface act on the object with opposite force, which is normal force, normal force. Normal force, this is the force which act by, by surface on any object which is on this, on this surface. The frictional force, force of friction, F, friction, directly proportional to the normal force. So directly proportional. This means more normal force, more friction. So the coefficient of proportionality depends on the surface and surface of the object. So if, if the surface which you are moving is smooth enough, or object also smooth enough, the frictional force is less. If surface is rough enough, frictional force will be bigger. So the coefficient of proportionality between them is known as a coefficient of friction. And we can write a friction equals mu times n, where this mu is coefficient of friction, mu, mu 
coefficient of friction. Coefficient of friction depends on the substances. It depends on the substances. For different substances, coefficient of friction is different. What is important that coefficient of friction mu is always less than one and more than zero, okay? If it's more than, if it's zero, object doesn't move at all. You know, if it's zero, there is no friction at all. If mu is one, object doesn't move at all, okay? So the objective of today's lab is to study force of friction. Friction related to the motion is known as a kinetic friction. So basically, objective of today's lab is, one of the objective is to find coefficient of friction uh, 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 for kinetic motion of one object on the other object. So, and this lab has two parts. One, when motion occurs along the horizontal plane, and the other one, when motion occurs along the inclined plane. So first, let me go through the motion for uh, uh, along the plane. So when object moves along the plane, we have to find coefficient of friction. Uh, first of all, let me mention the force of friction always oppose the motion. You will ask me, friction oppose the motion, why, you know, car moving forward? Look here. So this is your wheel. This is your wheel of your car, you know. Okay, this is your wheel. Will rotate it in this direction. Frictional force, when it's rotated in this direction, frictional force act in this direction. This is a friction. And this is why it's moving in this direction. So if you see, it's against opposite to the motion of what? Will, not a car. Will rotate it in this direction, frictional force producing in this direction. So, and this is why, why car is moving, okay? So, but you see it's opposite because rotation goes in this direction, rotation, you know? So, but force is in this direction. So, first of all, we will consider motion along the straight line, this one. So, what the experiment is designed the following way. You have the object, this object on horizontal plane, you know? And here, there is a pulley, okay? And here, you can hang the mass, mg, force. Look here, guys. When you put here small mass, it doesn't move. You add it more, it starts motion. But its motion can be this motion can be uh, uniform and this motion can be ununiform. So with acceleration, to find the frictional force when it's moving in this direction, this force which you apply is this one. The frictional force which producing a friction, a friction is this one. You know, to have uniform motion, the force which pulling, in our case, it will be this force mg, this is a point where force is uh, applied. Frictional force by magnitude should be equal to mg. In this case, it's moving uh, with, uh, without acceleration. How to get it? You're getting, putting here masses, and then you tap by surface like that. You're tapping that, and when you will see it start motion, so, and you will see it's not accelerated, but 
uniform. Of course, everything is object, uh, objective because one of you can see that, oh, it's moving with acceleration. The other will see, no, it does not. However, somehow average, when these two forces will be equal, I will have frictional force mu, friction force mu times normal force equals to mg, okay? So, but uh, uh, equals to mg, okay? Which hanging mg, mg. Frictional force n equals to mass of the object m capital times g. If I will plug this, I'm getting mu equals uh, mu times m capital G equals m small g, okay? So g and g cancel out, and I see that mu equals m, which hanging mass divided by m capital. So in other words, by having hanging mass and mass which is moving, you know, you can find coefficient of friction. This is first part of experiment, when, which you will perform. First part of this experiment, okay? So now, now, uh, so uh, now let me consider the second part of experiment where object is on inclined plane, okay? On inclined plane. To consider that we have to, uh, we have to draw absolutely different uh, free body diagram, absolutely different free body diagram. So what free body diagram do you do now? Okay. So uh, let me use, uh, did you see this part guys? Is it visible for you? Okay, if it's so, let me make now the graph. What's happening now? When you have inclined plane, this is inclined plane, angle of this plane is given. You're fixing this angle data. It's measurable. So, and you're putting here the object. This is object which you put. It has mass M, object has mass M. So what force is acting on this object? Of course, on this object act, let me use red color. If you not see, let me, tell me please. The force of MG force is acting vertically down, okay? Vertically down like that. This is force mg, okay? So mg, I will put here m times g. Did you see red color, guys? Is it visible for you? I'm getting here, please don't, uh, don't say um, uh, uh, through the chart. I cannot read the same time in lecture. Give me a voice. Is it visible red color? Hello? Yes, yeah, it, it is, Professor. Yeah. Okay, visible. Can you, can you please do this faster to report me? Because otherwise I have the sense that nobody in there. I didn't see your faces. I am speaking with computer, you see? It's awful. It's education for idiots because I cannot see you at all. <clears throat> because this must move uniformly, I have to resolve this force by two forces, okay? One force, this one, which is perpendicular to the surface. This is one component of this force, one component of this force. And the other force, The other force component, it will be which moves along, along the surface. 
This is basically the main force which, you know, which producing the motion. So, and you need this force in my notation, in my notation, you know, I have this force as F perpendicular. This is F perpendicular, and this is F parallel. So if this angle is theta, you know, F parallel will be, F parallel will be M G, you see, this is angle theta, this is angle theta, it will be mg sine of angle theta. Okay? So what about this f perpendicular? F perpendicular will be mg times cosine of theta. Okay? Now, the frictional force which acting, it should be opposed to this force. Oppose, this means it should be directed like that. And by magnitude, it must be absolutely the same as this one, because object we're assuming is moving without acceleration, uniform. Only in this case, if this force and this force, they will equal to each other by magnitude and opposite by direction, the object will move uniformly. From the other side, this perpendicular force should be also, should be also, uh, you know, eliminated by equilibrium force. And this force is the force of normal force N. This is my normal force N, okay? So as you know, as I wrote, a frictional force, equals to normal force uh, equals to coefficient of friction mu times normal force. But in my case, normal force equals to F perpendicular. F normal equals to F perpendicular. So if I will plug this, I'm getting the frictional force equals to mu times N mg times cosine theta, okay? Cosine theta, okay? This is what is, so, but this force, this force should be equal by magnitude F parallel because these two forces have to compensate each other if object moves uniform. This means from the other side, a friction should be equal to F parallel. So this is the value of a friction, this is value of F parallel. So I will write that F mu mu times mg cosine theta equals to this force mg times sine theta. Okay, so what you can see from here, from here you can see that this M and this M cancel out. This G, this G and this G, and this G cancel out. And finally, I will have that mu, mu cosine theta, equals to sine theta. From this equation, solving this equation, I am getting that mu equals coefficient of friction mu equals to what? Sine theta divided by cosine theta. But sine theta over cosine theta, this is tangent theta. This means finally I am getting that mu equals to tangent of angle theta. So this is the main equation which allowed me to find mu. So by moving this inclined plane, so by changing angle, I always able to get the angle when it starts sliding. 
by tapping of the surface, I will find this angle. If I know this angle, I will calculate tangent and I will get coefficient of, of, of coefficient of, of uh, friction. So in our case, coefficient of kinetic friction. So did you see we determine mu when it's most on horizontal plane and we determine mu when it's moves on, on um, inclined plane. However, you know, because the material is the same, coefficient of friction should be close to each other. So in other words, the objective is to find this coefficient of friction. Okay, so if I will share with you now screen, Uh, first of all, any questions for, for this explanation? Because I have to move to the other station now. No questions? Okay, if there is no questions, I am moving to other station and continue now with your data. So you can able to start to, to make the calculations. Okay, let me share the screen with you. Now I see 20 students are so it was some students was absent. Six students was absent when I start the class. Did you see the screen guys? This is the first part of experiment where we hanging the mass and reaching that the Tension force, which equal to the weight of this hanging mass, equal to the frictional force. This means this object will move uniformly. So in this case, we found coefficient of friction. And after that, we found coefficient of friction for the case, you know, for the case when we have inclined weight in the Case of inclined plane, as I explain you right now, everything depends on this angle, particularly coefficient of friction. I just approve for you coefficient of friction equals tangent tape. Okay, so now let me share with you the results. So, you know, when you have on horizontal plane, did you see this one? When you have on horizontal plane, you're putting here additional masses. You're adding masses and you're adding masses here so that it will, for different masses, it will be different mass here. So you can, uh, you can uh, initiate the motion of that. So here in table one is given the following for you that initial mass of the block is this one. Hanging mass is 7.5 kilogram, 75.5 kilograms. Then you're adding to block on horizontal surface additional 100 grams. Hanging mass becomes 105.5. Then you're adding additional 100 mass. It becomes 131. Then you're adding additional, it becomes 
65, additional is becomes 92. Okay, for each of them, you plotting the graph. But you, you calculate coefficient of friction, okay? So this is on horizontal plane, okay? Now, now, so as a result, your coefficient of friction final kinetic friction you're getting here as a result of such calculations, which here is described, you know? So you have to plot the graph, you have to plot the graph, uh, this mass versus this mass, and slope of this mass, slope of this graph gives you coefficient of friction. So here it's written in detail that determines the slope of the graph and the value of the slope equals the coefficient of friction. I believe each of you sees it. Let me highlight that. Okay, this is how you will determine coefficient of friction for the first graph, for first part of experiment. So, and this is table number one. For table number two, you putting on the top of the slide, you putting the first mass, which 100 grams, and measuring angle. Angle becomes 17 degrees, okay? You're putting additional 20 grams, angles becomes 18.5. You're putting additional 50 grams, you know, angle becomes 19. You're putting additional 30 grams, so angle becomes 17.5. For each of them, you're calculating the tangent of this angle. Please be advised, your angle given in degrees. If your calculations perform, uh, using Excel, you have to convert this angle from degrees to the uh, from degrees to the radians. How to convert it? You know. So, let me write here for you. Uh, this is in degrees. This is in degrees. Okay. So. Now, how to calculate this in radians? It's equal to the following, equal to the following. Uh, this angle theta, so it will be 17 times, times by 3.14159. What is this? This is P, pi, right? 3.14159, it's pi. And you divide it all that, you divide it all that by 180. Okay, this is how you converted all this stuff from degrees divided from degrees to radians. So, in other words, result will be in radians in this case, okay? And this one you put in your, in your Excel, as a result, you're able to calculate. Is it clear, guys? So this is all calculations. It's very simple lab. There are the questions which you have to uh, uh, write the answer. Let me put these questions like that. You know, this is mandatory for each of you. If you didn't do it automatically, 10 points off. So if there is a problem to solve the problem, you must show all work, not the answer. Show all work. If you have to derive something, you have to show all work also. On this point, I finished my explanation for you. And now, please, if any questions, I am here to answer for them, to give you answer. And please start working for your calculations, plotting the graph and so on. I am stay with you. I am stay with you here. So any questions you can ask me. Please don't write, ask me. I cannot 
follows the same time to the class and chart. Okay. Okay, start please working. Currently I have 20 students. And as I mentioned for you, I didn't have any yet submission for a vector edition yet. I didn't see any. By the end of the day today, you will have your grades for acceleration with the grab. Mr. Abari, you didn't submit any lab report yet. Mr. Aslan, you didn't submit any lab report. For the first, both of you will losing 20 points because it's two, two weeks more than past. Okay? Now, so, and all others who didn't submit the same, the same rule applicable. Okay, please do your best, submit as soon as possible. Hello? No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, so I uh, saw uh, your uh, uh, person who is working there. I gave him uh, the size, everything, because I thought maybe you didn't see my uh, uh, text yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So he told me. Oh, okay. Okay. One. Two, you know.
Any questions, guys? Victor Johannes, please respond to me. Victor. Yes, Professor. Uh, you submit your lab report as different pages, JPEG pages. I cannot check that. There is no way 
you must make PDF file and, resub and resend me by email. I will not take lateness. However, I cannot check each page and it's related to all of you. You must submit one file right now. I am checking the files of some of you who submit Word file. Guys, Word file is too big. System work very slow. It takes long time to upload it. Please make all this PDF and submit all this PDF file. Victor, did you understand what I said? Yeah, I understood. Okay, please send me today uh, by, by email because you cannot upload now.
Guys, any questions? Any questions or any help you need? I'm here. 